This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. So Vince Russo is going to come back and be brought to be the, uh, head of creative Scott Demore in the process is being quote unquote demoted. Uh, why Vince here and how did the conversation go with Jim Cornette regarding the return of Russo? So that's a two-parter. Uh, we'll, we'll cover Scott being demoted. That's, you know, th- there was a time that Scott was more or less pulling the pieces. Scott could probably have a little bit of recall. I don't remember him quote unquote being demoted. I knew that it was a big room and that, uh, again, my wife was sick. So there were times that I couldn't be in the room 24 seven. And I say the creative room. And so it was determined Dutch, Mike Tanay, Bill Banks is before Matt Conway. Um, trying to think Jeremy Borash, but have somebody sort of running point. And so it wasn't like he had this position and got demoted. It was, we're going to shrink the crew to uh, Vince and Dutch and Jeff. Uh, but but it, it, as far as like the, the nucleus of it, but Jeremy Bora, nobody got their pay reduced or got fired. Bill Banks and Mike and Jeremy, we used to have three-day runs out here at the house, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for creative. I'm pretty sure it was just me, Vince, and Dutch on Tuesdays uh, just to, for us to sort of get a core where it's just us as we move forward. And then on Wednesdays and Thursdays, uh, Jeremy and my, you know, the rest of the crew came out and Scott. So the demoting is not completely accurate, but um, so it was a, a new shift. Now, how, and I tried to wreck my brain. Now I can recall Bill Banks talking about special victims units. I don't know exactly how Vince reappeared. My gut tells me he was working on Dixie, having the conversations, uh, and you know, it it was swirling around like that. But the fun part was Vince is coming back and I had to have the conversation with uh, Jim Cornette. Can't imagine that went well. We want to remind everybody they had major heat over the way Russo booked WCW, including the, um, I guess we'll call it a parody of Jim Ross. Of course, they had a character named Oklahoma, but they essentially mocked Bell's palsy and boy, it got all over Jim Cornette. Among other things, yes. the, the real meat and potatoes were philosophically, they do not see eye to eye at all, at all. But my conversation was like any great conversation with Jim Cornette. I mean, colorful probably salty language here and there, but at the end of the day, it was pretty simple and it was Jim. Look, I'm not telling you or even proposing to you, you work with him in a creative setting, coexist with him. And I can tell you and look you eye to eye. He is not the final decision maker. Him and Dutch are going to be in a room together and Dutch has agreed and, and happily so. And it was one of those conversations. And again, Jim lives in Louisville. He would drive in his car from Louisville, Kentucky to Orlando. He wanted no part of being a part of full-time creative at all. And Jim was an incredible resource and Dutch would talk to him throughout the week. And I would as well. I mean, it was Jim again, I'll call it the wrestling logic and tying a to B to C to D great at it. So, uh, there, there was never a conversation between should I bring Jim on full time as opposed to Vince. That wasn't it. I'm pretty sure Dixie wanted Vince to be a part of things. And I did agree that we need to sort of take a couple of cooks out of the kitchen and narrow it down. But then everybody was still a part of the team moving forward. Uh, Meltzer would write that you were sort of spearheading the five man team. But he thought the issue was that means if you've got five people, there's a lot of ideas, but there's no pure view. And if you're sort of running things, then whenever you vote a certain way, you're going to get most of the time, the automatic approval of Dutch Mantel and Jeremy Borash. So most of the votes come down to three, two anyway, but now there's going to be a new three man team. And it's phrased again, as if you're going to be essentially, uh, Russo's filter for lack of a better word. 
And we want to remind everybody Russo left in November of Oh four. So here he is just shy of two years and Dixie's bringing him back. Uh, the torch would write regarding the booking committee changes. One wrestler was overheard saying the monster still lives. They cut off both of his arms and one of his legs. That's referring to Scott Demore, Jeremy Borash and Mike Tanay, but left with his other leg, Dutch Mantel and his head, Jeff Jarrett attached. So now it'll be Vince Russo, Dutch Mantel and Jeff Jarrett as part of this three man committee. The real question is why does everybody hate you? <laughs> I'm the monster. Uh, again, it, it, it's to me, it's very simple. The boss. And you yeah. can, Conrad, you live it every day. It yeah. is what it is. But the industry that I'm in, and I firmly believe you got to have the buck stops with someone. And the scenario, again, invested my own money, starting it up, losing the investor, the card is coming on board. Still, we were doing everything we could to keep the ship rowing in the same direction. But uh, why did everybody hate Jeff? Uh, on screen, I like to say that I was a decent heel. Off screen is because I was the boss. <laughs> uh, from the torch, Jeff Jarrett closed the show with a public execution of Sting's career in preparation for the NWA title match at the October pay per view Bound for Glory. In the ring, there was a noose hanging from the ceiling, a contract side on a table, and a makeshift tombstone. Jarrett said that capital punishment is alive and well on planet Jarrett and Jarrett talked about all the various ways he could have Sting's career executed. He pulled out a pen and signed the contract to face Sting. The crowd of course is chanting you suck and Jeff vows. This will be Sting's final match. Suddenly the red Batman phone rang at the announcer's desk. Don West answered it and it was Jim Cornette's voice on the other end. He asked to be patched into the live audience. And he says, he's going to take up Jarrett on his offer to take a lie detector test. He said next week, if he passes the test, he can take a break from wrestling until bound for glory. He says, if Jarrett fails any part of the test, he would give the fans a chance to get even with Jarrett in a very personal way. And Cornette tells Jarrett to think about whether he fears sting in the ring or the fans in the building more. Jarrett stood near the ropes, folded his hands solemnly and made the, I'm scared. My head hurts. This can't be happened to me. My plan is foiled. What am I going to do face? Mm. That is directly from Wade Keller. Tell me about there's lots to unpack here. As I like to say <laughs> the red Batman phone, the noose, the makeshift tombstone Cornette speaking to the studio audience through telephone old school. Where do you want to start, pal? Where we uh, Memphis, Tennessee, uh, studio wrestling, or are we Georgia championship wrestling, or are we down to sportatorium? Go ahead. That's, that's Memphis right there for real. Is it not a <laughs> little bit? I mean, you know, I, it's again, um, uh, the, the, the newsletter writers, it's uh, a visual. Oh, the Batman phone. Yes. Uh, in essence, uh, Jim Cornette is the figurehead authority. Um, he is, uh, the matchmaker he's overseeing things. And so he's watching this from his office or studio or wherever it may be. And so as opposed to coming out on TV and the television producer says, <clears throat> that's going to take a lot more time, music and entrance and Cornette come out. And then he's going to say something with a microphone and there you run a chance of rebuttal. Let's let Cornette get on the phone pipe through because we want a real live crowd reaction. And so I, I'm not sure what your question was. We're unpacking a lot here, but I think you wanted me to go into the Batman phone. It's a way for Cornette to get a stipulation out or a, a storyline advancement out um, as opposed to him coming out on stage and taking another uh, out of a one hour show uh, a 90 seconds, which is very valuable. But again, Bound for glory is not the next pay-per-view. Shouldn't you be using this valuable TV time to sell the next pay-per-view and not the one after that? We are selling the stipulation of if I'm going to wrestle at no surrender. I'm with you, but it still feels like we're building to the match after that. No, I did. <sighs> okay. Uh, I'm a wrestling fan. You're not, but you probably know better than me. Uh, Jeff, you... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you saying I'm not a wrestling fan? 
Correct. You're, uh, you're in the bubble. Oh, folks in Hendersonville, they call them fighting words. <laughs> Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you can notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a third of your loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.